In the upcoming video, I'm about to have a chat with Tross from Hammers United. You've all seen him before on this channel. Before we get into that chat, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play you the statement that Tross made to all the Hammers United members directly after he heard the David Sullivan interview on TalkSport, which is precisely that and the fallout from that, which is what this video is all about. So, good morning, Hammers United. Um, very, very quick video. I'll be doing a full update tomorrow. Tross, Joint Secretary, as you know. Um, many of you may have just heard David Sullivan talking on TalkSport about the current situation we have at West Ham, inundated already with messages and different questions. My phone's gone off the hook. I've taken 10 minutes out of my day just to quickly put out some feedback from us as a group to some of those statements. Um, you know, very much in and around... Uh, David's depressed. Well, you may de be depressed, mate. We've had 10 years of your leadership in that team. You've really got no inkling of what being depressed as a West Ham United fan is all about, in my opinion. Um, you know, the club will go bankrupt if you buy players. You've been in charge for 10 years. You've borrowed a shed load of money to put it in play. If you're on the verge of taking this club bankrupt and can't afford to buy players, isn't it time you look to put it up for sale, mate? Isn't it time you look to put it up for sale? Because if you haven't got what it takes to take us to the next level, which is the promise that you and your leadership team made when you came on board and bought this clubs, then maybe it's time for you to move on. Hiding behind the challenges that football faces because there's going to be no gate money in the COVID crisis isn't good enough. Nobody could have legislated for the current crisis we find ourselves in. That's acceptable. But we're not a we're, we're not a, we're not a Saturday side. We're not a local team. You know, we're not Ebb's fleet. You know, we're not playing in the lower leagues. We're a premiership team with hundreds of millions coming in of TV revenue in advance. The players that were bought in that you've said you stepped away and gave the West Ham fans what they want by bringing in a manager and a director of football. If you didn't do your due diligence, mate, on that director of football who had a shocking track record and that manager who was a big checkbook manager and there were many questions asked by many people around his appointment at the time, that's your decision. That's your responsibility. From a fan's perspective, we believe that you own that. And that's something that you need to sleep on and you need to recognise that you can't just go and blame the hire that you made. You made the hire. You're accountable. You sit in the big chair. You make the big decisions. If you're not comfortable with those decisions, if you feel you're making the wrong decisions, again, I say to you openly and honestly, consider your options. Put the club up for sale. Give somebody who can come in and somebody who will find the right price for the club because there are a few things there you were talking about overpaying. Anybody who's looking to buy West Ham doesn't want to overpay for it. Why don't you cut your losses, wipe your mouth, get the money that you're due to be paid back, that you need, that you feel that you're owed, put the club up for sale and let someone come along who can run the business properly, professionally and take us to the next level that you and this team got us to leave our spiritual home and move to the London Stadium for. That's pretty much everything for me, guys. I'll give you a full update tomorrow. Have a great one. Come on, your ones. Uh, good morning, one and all. I say good morning. It might be good afternoon or good evening by the time you watch this. But I would imagine such as your annoyance with West Ham United, you're probably watching it when I've uploaded it, which is first thing in the morning. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to describe everything he does because this is uh, Tross's fourth time on the channel. But suffice to say, we've got Tross here. He is secretary of Hammers United. And we're going to be discussing, let's say, David Sullivan digging a bit of a hole for himself uh, on the radio on TalkSport yesterday. Welcome, mate. Hello, Chris. Thanks very much for having us on, Gons. A pleasure as always, mate. As always, good to be here. Feeling like a feeling like a bit like a part of the furniture now. Now we wear around for a bit. Oh, so. they, they they know they know you. You always get good comments as well, mates. Which is yeah, always... they they they. I, I I like your mob, mate. They're always nice, which is which is always good. And uh, yeah, um, what a day, mate. What a day. It has, it has it has been a day. And for context, we're recording this. Uh, at the end of what has been a very long Wednesday, because it, what is it now? It's what's it five to five to ten at night. This is this is a big day for West Ham, and I think particularly a big day for Hammers United, and certainly everything that, that Tross and his fantastic um, team are doing over there. Because, and I'm going to let him speak for a long time here, because he's got a lot of information he wants to get out, and we want to know his opinions. I know Hammers United have got a lot of members who've been asking a lot of questions. But just briefly, for those of you that don't know, I'll, I'll assume that you don't know. Yesterday, David Sullivan did an interview on TalkSport. It was with his favourite journalist, Jim White. If you haven't heard it already, 
there are links everywhere. Whatever your favourite West Ham website is, it's going to have a link to it. If not, I'll put one underneath on here. Give give the interview a little listen and then make up your own mind. But the reason this is, I feel it's important for Hammers United is for so long, Hammers United have been trying to get dialogue with the club. Uh, so much of it has been trying to open a channel of communication. And during that period, I, I know for a fact that you've had lots of correspondence with lots of people at the club, but probably not the interaction you wanted with the, uh, with, with the top man, so to speak. Also, as fans, I feel we've been waiting for a statement. And certainly we were on our video last time. I indicated to yourself and Paul that I wanted them to come out and say something. I wanted a statement. This is not what I wanted, though. I wanted them to give an explanation of, of why we moved, why we don't have any money, why it's failed. And then I wanted them to sort of reassess what they've done. And, and based on, I think it was an apology as much as anything else. So having waited all of this time, and yourselves have looked for this dialogue, what you get now is a, a puff piece, basically, from one of his favourite journalists, and him making a number of statements on what was what was really a, a weird old interview. Um, we'll, we'll start with it. We'll start at the top. He's de- David Sullivan's depressed, Tross. Uh, and, and that saddens me greatly. Gonzo, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but I wonder what the depth of David Sullivan's depression is in comparison to the regular West Ham fan and in comparison to most of the 15,000 members that I've got, given his tenure at the club. Depressed? I'm depressed. I'm depressed that what everybody wanted was delivery of the promises that were originally made. I'm depressed that we've asked repeatedly for a vision of where this board are looking to take us as a club. I'm depressed because I'm struggling to understand how, how on this God's green earth, the main man at the football club, the man in the chair, right? And I know, I know we've all given him a lot of stick over a long period of time, but the man who ultimately makes the big decisions at this football club, right? He is top of the tree, ultimate decision maker. The buck stops with David Sullivan. And for him to come out and say, well, I'm depressed that we can't do anything. I am i can't buy any players because I might bankrupt the club. Like, seriously, mate, it's, to me, I'm... I'm normally really vocal, really, really upbeat. And, you know, like, oh, well, we've got to do this. We can do change. We can achieve change. Just going back to what you said at the beginning, we've had some, we've had some excellent dialogue with some really good people at the club who have got good ideas about how things can change at West Ham, Right. I'm part of a group that's working very, very hard with the FSA to look to establish, and it's, it's common knowledge, looking to establish a, a brand new, for the fan, by the fans, for the fans, supporters, board, committee, forum, whatever you want to call it, but a brand new construct that's ours, owned by the supporters, so we can get dialogue in line with the FSA's vision and be able to start Bridging that gap. You want to bridge the gap because we all know there's a disconnect between how we feel and how those at the upper echelons of the club are running it, right? We know that, right? We know that. And I've asked, you've asked, loads of other influencers have asked, you know, other people on my committee have asked, well, what is the picture? What is the story? Where are you going? What are you looking to achieve? If the communication's bad, let's improve it. Let's do all this stuff, right? And I speak to people at the club who I know, I, I, I work, I, I, I do people, right? I work with people. I work in tech, but I work with people every day. And I know when people are genuine and they want to do better, right? And the people that I speak to and work with at the club, they want to do better. But how can better ever be achieved under this regime, Gonzo? How, how can better ever be achieved under this regime? You know, the, the, guy, the guy's come out and he's made these statements today 
He's saying he's depressed, you know. He's, he's talking about, you know, we haven't got any money. You know what, I'm like, well, you know, my, my, my kids come and shake me down every now and again, you know, for a five rear, a ten at the age, right, you know. Dad, Dad, can I have a go? I ain't got any money. And I put my hands in my pockets, right, now. I've got a bit of money. Oh, you know? I was going to say, I bet you got some change <laughs> yeah, jangling around in oh, 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 short, short, short arms, yeah. deep pockets well, and all that. Well, you know, yeah, very much champagne, 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 champagne taste, lemonade pockets, you know, the drill, right? But he's, um, it, it's very much a case of, like, no, I make a conscious decision. You're not having any money and you're not having any money because I've paid for your Spotify. I've paid for this. You've got this membership. You've got that, the other, the other, the other, the other, the other. You're overprivileged little sod. Get out of it, right? That, that kind of thing, right? Which isn't true because I love them. You know? But it's... Uh, I look at the statement today, like, we haven't got any money. You know, uh, football's in a terrible state. What a crisis we're in. Um, you know, it's, it's a terrible times. You know, if we look to pay over the top for players, we could go bankrupt. Well, that would be funny, mate. The players that we've been linked to and the players we understand, and we hear a lot, we hear a lot on the jungle drums across the West End community, right? Yeah. It's exactly like... We're, it's not exactly a closed ship, is it? You know, there's more more leaks than the Titanic, mate. Unbelievable. So we know the players that Moyes was after, the ones that he was interested in, because he went and saw them, and they were the guys he wanted. And they went to other clubs. And they didn't go for massive over the going rate. They went for the going rate. That's the price, Right. And then there's the talk, well, you know, we can't play over the top because if we play over the top, we'll go we'll, we'll go bankrupt, you know. And the reference, clearly the reference is to, you know, is to is to, is to Jim of Burnley, right? Let's call him that, right, and keep it up there. Uh, and, you know, well, we're not going to pay for him. We're not going to pay that kind of money to get him. Do I think he's worth 40, 50 million quid? I don't know. It seems like an awful lot of money to, for a footballer, you know. But footballers cost an awful lot of money. But if that's the centre-back your manager wants... And you were willing to give the last manager that kind of money and that kind of backing. Why won't you give this manager that kind of money and that kind of backing? And then when you look at the, and what really annoyed me earlier, right? And you know, I was a little bit, I was a little bit early. I was a little bit annoyed earlier. You know, I happened to be on a break, and I don't get many breaks during my day. I was on a break, and one of my, one of my pals said, Look, "Jump on Talksport quickly, Tross. You know, you've got to hear this." So. I've gone on and I caught it live as it came on. And I, I was straight out of the statement, furious, right? How can you say... Well, he's basically blaming us, right? He's blaming, he's, he's blaming us, he's blaming Moyes, and he's blaming Pellegrini. He's, but he's the, blaming we're blaming he's, the fans he's, for he's, Pellegrini. He's, he's, it's our fault, right? It's our fault, yeah. that it's our fault that you've gone through more managers in your tenure than any other owner of our football club ever, Right? Well, that's not our fault, mate. Before Pellegrini, that was your fault. And your inability to deliver in line with your plan, it's not our fault, is it? That's your fault. You own that. You know, and then you've decided to go and get go and get Pellegrini. We all knew he was a checkbook manager and there were a lot of questions asked at the time. Is he the right guy for West Ham? No, we're going to go for a glam signing, someone who's won the Premiership. Yeah. Someone who won the Premiership with an awful lot of money. Have you got that awful lot of money? It's a bit like, it's a bit like me and you going... Here, Gons, what are you doing Saturday? And you go, well, might be going to football for a while. Will I, will I trust? You know, I say, I'm pretty open. Well, do you fancy going down HR Owens? I've seen this banging Ferrari they've got in the window. 210 grand it is, but I do like the colour. It's bright red, you know? And you'd probably say, I'd never drive anything bright red because I'm a West Ham fan, you know? Not that everybody doesn't buy into that, do they? But that's another conversation, right? We wouldn't buy it, would we? We'd go in there, we'd go, right, OK, well, it's lovely, but it's a lot of money. How much have you got, Gonzo? <laughs> I've got 50 quid. <laughs> How much have you got, Chos? Well, I've, got, I've got nothing because my kids cleaned me out before I came over to oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> right? You wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't put yourself in there because you wouldn't buy it. Yet we've got owners who have put themselves in the window at HRO. They've gone and bought the Ferrari, but they can't afford to run it, can they? Because if you change if you change the corners on a Ferrari, mate, it's not like changing the corners on your full Bondeo, is it? You know, it costs a little bit more money. You've got a mechanical problem with a Ferrari. It costs a lot of money to take that into Ferrari and get it put right. You can't pop up to John, the mechanic up the road, who's married to your sister's brother's cousin, and he'll fix it for 50 quid because you're a bit short. It doesn't work like that. 
You know, uh, and this 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 environment, this situation that's been created over an extended period of time, where and, and you could hear it today, it made my blood boil. That, that, well, the only two players that I bought were Diop and Fabianski. You know, because because I really rated those players, I really wanted them. The others were down to the managers, and I wish I'd done something about it then, but I didn't. Have a word. If one of my kids turned around and said. Well, Dad, you know, I, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to jump in your car, seeing as I'm only 16 and I haven't got a license, and I drove it through the wall, you know. And I wish I hadn't done it, but I, I, I did, you know. I wish I didn't do it, but I did. I'd still kill him, right? Because he shouldn't be in the car. Exactly in the Ferrari, mate. You know, exactly in the Ferrari, it'd kill me. Well, I suppose that uh, if you did it in the yellow one, I'd live with it. But you know, it, it's 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 not. It's just not the way. Uh, and the the abstention of responsibility in li- in life in general, right? I'm the kind of guy I think you've got to be accountable for your decisions, right? You know, I, I raise my kids so that they're accountable for their behaviour and their decisions. I think it's an important life, it's an important life skill. It's an important thing. It defines character to me, how you take that responsibility. And to me, it's an abstention of responsibility. It's a bit like, well, you know, that wasn't my fault. Well, of course it was your fault. It was your decision, mate. You hired Pellegrini. You know, you brought him in. Well, I thought the whole thing was an exercise in justification. I thought the whole thing was a lot of excuse making. And it's funny you mentioned your kids. I've got four kids myself. And I know when um, I know when I'm being I know I'm being led down a garden path. I thought what was really interesting about the whole thing was that when he was when he was just trying to explain everything, I felt he was trying to prepare us for bad news. But it was very transparent that he was doing that. I found that. Look, he, he has drip fed news since COVID started. Never has he come out and said anything. Why do we know we're skint? Because he said it. Why do we know? Because he's leaked it. Why do we know the budget? Because he's leaked it. Everything has been leaked. And from those sort of nuggets of information, we've had to basically collate all the nuggets and make our own make our own judgments on what's happened. So we really needed him to come out. And we really needed him to explain. And bearing in mind he'd waited for so long, I would have expected a message of absolute clarity. But he didn't do that at all. It was a load of excuse making. I felt there was something very interesting. You won't know this because obviously I know, myself and G have just recorded the cup of tea. And it's something that he kept on saying time and time again. And it was, I can't just give the manager players that he doesn't want. Oh, now, number yeah. one, I think it's a strange thing to say. It's a very odd thing to say four or five times because I do find language always very, very interesting. Why do you keep saying it? It's clearly an issue. And you alluded to it at the start it, it, of the video. And I, and I know, and I know I, I've been I've been back to back for most of today. Right. But I, th- that interview burned into the back of my head early this morning. And what was really poignant for me, what he said was at West Ham, we haven't got a coach. We've got a manager. If we didn't have a manager, but we had a coach, I'd be able to bring in these players. It was almost gutted. You know, disappointed. So now, with, with the greatest of respect, right, we have got a manager. And for however people may feel, I know it's a very mixed bag for David Moyes, you know, but whatever people may think, he did a good job last time round in keeping us up. Nobody can dispute that. He was treated very, very harshly. Um, questionable about whether he was the man to bring back in or not. He came up, he stood up to the challenge, he took the job, right? But he is your manager. He is the manager of West Ham United Football Club. And the poor fella was diagnosed with potential COVID last night. Although the way he was talking about that, I wonder, well, has Moyes got COVID or isn't he? Or has he got a test? That's, that's you know, a, like, he's got a sore throat. Honestly, I, I was like, well, what does he need? Hospitalisation or a packet of lockets? Like, what's going on, right? <laughs> and I, I'm, I, I'm kind of trying to get my head around. If I'm David Moyes now and I'm like, and you'll probably watch the video a few times because it's David Moyes, <laughs> right? But if I'm David Moyes, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, does this fella want me? Because we all heard the rumblings a few weeks back. It was everywhere, wasn't it? You know, they've had a bust up. This is going on. Moyes wants these players. Sullivan saying take these players. There's a real problem. They're having a big off. It was all right. Everyone knew. Everyone knew something about it. No one knew what really happened, but everyone knew something. It was a, it was a wash with it, a live with it. So you wonder... Is that a death bell ringing in the background? Or is it not? 
You know, uh, and then, but and then, you know, I'm like, if I'm David Moyes and I'm putting my head down tonight, am I thinking, well, have I got a job here, or haven't I? Because it doesn't sound to me like I've got the backing of the board. Not that anybody wants the backing of the board in modern football. You know, it's always, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So, so you look at that, and I'm like, well, I see that as being a big issue. Then, then I, then I look at some of the, some of the rhetoric. You know, like the this amazing, <laughs> this amazing team that we've got. You know, the the new loving for Robert Snodgrass, I think, is amazing. You know, that must be quite reassuring for the Scots better. And, yeah. you know, you yourself were saying, you know, um, you know, how many how many wingers? Well, he said eight, but he takes us for fools. We're meant to, we're meant to believe, even though we watch the team all the time, we're meant to believe that. When he calls Robert Snodgrass, and I am aware that Robert Snodgrass has played the majority of his career out wide, but to call him a winger now is disingenuous. It is to ignore all of the evidence of the last two years when he's either not been available or when he has or when he's actually been utilised in central midfield. To call him a winger, it's not right. He's leading us down the garden path. And as... As Gio made the point as well in a cup of tea, he's also responsible for that because he oversaw the construction of that squad. Not all of those players were brought in by Pellegrini and he did hire Pellegrini. And a lot of us, as you alluded to, didn't want Pellegrini. But he, everything is everybody else's fault. It's our fault he hired Pellegrini, the fans' fault. The fans asked for Pellegrini. Well, I can tell you now, we've got an archive of videos that we've done, and you can easily, which is one of the benefits I, of Hammers Chat, yeah. you can go back, you look I at our back. videos. Yeah. I, 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 you can actually hear me saying on the video, he's not. I said Pellegrini's not even in my top 10 managers. I fear he's already retired from the game. We shouldn't be doing it. And yeah, all the comments to, Sunday. When out, are the to Grace, mate. When, out, when, out, when out to Grace, people go out to China, they go out to Grace, don't they? And, and then to come back in, well, you know, uh, and I think if we look at his, if we look at his director of football, right, that he brought in, because he kind of he pushed that one over the table, didn't he? Early, you know, we've got a director of football. You know, the fans wanted the director of football. I stepped away from the transfers. We brought in this director of football. Well, it's a bit like me, really, going. I, I don't know. In in my bit, well, you know, um, I, I I'm not happy with the I'm not happy with the CFO, right? I'm not happy with the CFO. I'm not happy with the way the budgets are. I think the P and Ls are out. You know. Let's get rid of the CFO. Board says we need a new CFO. We get a new CFO. Right, I'm going to get a new CFO, but I really like the old CFO. So I'm going to get a CFO, but I know that they are uh, four times bankrupt and a raging spendthrift with massive drink problems. He's going to spend all day in the pub. But, you know, that's what you wanted. Well, no, that isn't what we wanted. Of course it isn't what we wanted. What people wanted was something that was going to come into play to stop all the crazy signings, let's not de- let's not detract from the contracts that have been bought in, the players that have been bought in, the people and the packages that they have authorised and put in, the extensions to contract, the money that's been wasted at this football club, and that we seem to be borrowing more and more money to fill the gaps of the decisions we make that are bad. That waste. It, it, it's just it's like this. It's like this circle, this ever decreasing circle of depression. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, what I do wonder is, and I do feel that this is very transparent. I, I feel that initially Sullivan probably came off that interview and thought, oh, this is this this is good. I, I've done rather well here because I do think he takes us for fools. I think he expects, I think if you say, some people, if they say something enough times, they believe it and they expect us to believe it. But we don't believe that we were responsible for Pellegrini. We, we all are aware he was almost trying to undermine David Moyes. But what I took from that, which is something I've suspected, as you know, for a little while now, yeah. because we, we get we get little snippets of Most information snippets. about transfers. I, I've been suspicious for a little while that David Moyes has highlighted three, four or five players. Yeah. Now, call him Divering Dave or not. You you can use that as as a stick to beat him with, or you can actually say, well, he actually he's quite decisive. So every time Sullivan has come back to him, I say, well, what about this geezer um, from South America? Because we don't want another Wellington Paul Easter or any, or anyone like that. What we want is is David who David Moyes wants, but he's almost trying to get anyone apart from his transfers and and the targets that David Moyes wants. And I just felt he was trying to prepare us, not only for the fact that we won't, David Moyes won't get his targets. I felt that that interview was directed at everyone. A bit of it was directed at David Moyes, will be isolating, listening to that. But a lot of it was um, directed at us, telling us, well, you know what, you might not get any transfers. And then there was 
there was almost a reference back to the good old days of we saved you and there's lots of debt at the club. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was just about to come in there. I've, yeah, I, come I, on, please do, please do. That, that, that's what made me, when he was going, you know, well, you know, we've come in and what are you going to do? And not even just going back to the good old days. I love the way I love the way it's, it's snapshots, isn't it? You know, like like we were a really good team. No, we were a really good team. We're not a bad team, you know. We, oh yeah. We just need to get back to our old selves. You we know? don't need any. We don't need any signings. We're a good team. We don't need any signings. We're a really good team. Now, don't get me wrong, right? I actually think the performance that was put in by those boys at the back end of the season, under lockdown, and all the conditions that come with it, you know. Outstanding to a man. Full full respect to David Moyes, full respect to the team, right? But in business, in any other business, right, if you looked at your year and you had targets to hit over the course of the year, right, and you failed January, February, March, you know, right the way through, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, your ass is hanging out, right? And you're coming into December and you're like, guys, December, we need we need to we, we need to pardon we need to shit a miracle in December to save this year, right? Is that, is that, corp- is that about, corporate talk? It's, it's all it's all about December, right? It's all about December. That's what we've got to do, right? We've got to smash it in December. We've got to make up the last eleven months in December. Otherwise, business is going to go pop. We're not here come January, right? And we turn around and we get over the line. And the team gets over the line in December, you know. I'm not starting January thinking. What a result. What a great we're answer. brilliant. What's yeah. Charge, we're brilliant again. Let's carry on. Let's charge. Through. No, because the reality is, as much as I've, I've watched games when he's played football and he's been thoroughly entertaining, you know, Felipe Anderson, over his tenure so far at the club, has under delivered, right? Yarmolenko has been injured, and I grant him that he's been injured for a period of time, but he's also under delivered. I had a few people talking about after the whole game the other night, really good performance and yeah. the second string and what they've done and everybody deserves a shot. Well, actually, do you know what? Do they deserve a shot? Because when they were in the first team last time round, they weren't actually delivering, were they? So now they're in the reses and they're kind of playing through and they're playing well in the cup. You know, we've beat Hull, whoopie do. Hull as a football club is probably worth what? You know, 30 million, 35 million at a push. Those four players that people are referring to, probably 100, 105 million. Yeah, yeah. We performed against Hull. We've got Everton in the next round of the cup. See how they perform against Everton. They do well there. Then we can see the kids and then what they did now, they turned out fantastic. But the dependency and to suggest that we don't need anybody else to come in because we've got a great squad, we've got a great palette, we've got, got great players. The squad's really unbalanced. We've got eight wingers. Well, it's a contradictory statement. You're talking in riddles, man. What are you doing? You know, we don't need to buy any more players, you know, but the squad's unbalanced. Well, if the squad's unbalanced, you do need to buy more players, you know. And if you're looking at areas like the Arsenal game, right, quick quick, 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 quick summary of what happened at Arsenal. We played really well, just like we did last year. I was over, I was over there for the last one, right? We played really well against the Arsenal, you know. What happened? Arsenal made a substitution. They bought on one of their kids, one of their prodigies, he scored the winning goal. Yeah? West Ham. Well, one of our prodigies scored a goal on the same day, didn't he? Yeah, but he yeah, scored yes, he West Brom, not for us. Right? So you you're giving it you're giving away capability that you've got by saying, Well, look, we're not going to play D and Garner. We're going to go back and play Anderson, who didn't deliver over the course of last season. You know, we we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rely we're gonna rely on the same team that we relied on last year. And where did we finish last year? Because you can't just look at those seven games, Dave. You've got to look at a season. And you've got to look at how they delivered over the course of the season. And there, there is not enough about that squad. It is, is, it's not got enough balance. It needs investment. It needs an overhaul. And Moyes knows that because he's asked for players in it. He knows he's got good players in it, but he needs to balance it up. And that's why he's probably gone, look, I want three senior heads here. These are the guys that I need. These are the holes that I've got. These are the heads that I need. And our owners are going, well, no, that's too much money. I'm not going to pay it. Now, this comes back to what I was saying earlier, right? If we're in the position, if you've made the mistakes that have put us in this position, if you've taken the decisions that have put us in the positions, you are accountable. And if you are accountable for those mistakes, right, you've got to figure out whether you want to do something about it or you don't. And if you do want to do something about it, you've got to go and find the money. 
because you're the man that sits in the big chair. You're the man who makes all the big decisions. You're the billionaire. You're the billionaire owner. You know, you're the guy who's told me before and that I don't know anything about football. You know everything about football and finance. You know, so show me what you know. If that's what you've got, if you're the billionaire owner and you've got the money, do something about it. Put your mistakes right by finding the money to fix the problem. Don't punish David Moyes. Don't punish West Ham fans for your mistakes. Put them right. And if you don't want to put them right, that's fine too. If you don't want to find the money, you know, and by find the money, I mean find your own money to put in the club to put yeah, in yeah. the stakes, right? Not borrow more money that we've got to pay interest on, which creates an even bigger hole for us. Put us up for sale, David. Just, let me let me let me just let me just stop you there. Let me just stop you there. What I'm going to do is I, at the start of this video, I'm, I'm working in reverse order now. I'm actually going to put your um your video from earlier, your little two little two and a half minute clip. I'll I'll put that in the start of the video to give people um a little bit of context before we then start our chat. In that, you 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 finish up by saying what you're just about to say now, which is about finding new owners. What I what what I'd like to know, and I think what. Well, Let's get something out there for the Hammers United members, for your 15,000 members. I know it's we've had less than 24 hours. We've only had a day. So what has anything changed? What are Hammers United think? I know you've probably not had time to convene and, and everything. <laughs> what are you thinking? What's the feedback from from your members, from your from your group as well, your committee? Um, just tell, yeah, yeah, tell, tell us, yeah, tell us something from Hammers United's as a result of that interview that's happened with David Sullivan today. All right, go on then. Ask me away, mate, and then we'll go. You get it. Well, no, no, that's that, that's it, really. What 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 are you what are you feeling? What's what's the general consensus among your committee following following that? Is that it? you want him out? You want new owners? Tell us. Yeah, so there's there's huge disappointment. There's huge frustration. You know, across the board, our members, the messages that are coming up, people see on our Facebook page, on Twitter. GSB out again was trending right right up there again in the UK as one of the largest tweets. You know, people were going mad when the other West Ham fan who runs that team at TalkSport was saying, well, you know, fair play to him. He's come on, he's been honest. He was admonished by everybody going, well, how can you be a West Ham fan and feel that way? Look, he's not investing in the club. People have had it to the back teeth. You know, our members have had it to the back teeth. They're like, why won't he just go? If he doesn't want to put his money in, what's he doing it? You know, what's he staying here for? You know, uh, we're saying GSB out. We want GSB out. We want Gold Sullivan and Brady gone. And as a committee, you want to sit around a table with them. And I'd love to understand. I called it out before, I think, when I'm on here. I still know the answer. I want to understand what their vision is. I want to understand where they're going to take it. Because when I sit down to my, sit down with my committee, there are people on my committee who are turning around and going, no, we need them out. They've got to go. You know, they've just, they've just got to go. And I'm saying, well, look, we were in the position here to sit around the table with them and ask them straight out what they're going to do. What I want is I want them to come back to us and go, do you know what? We'll sit around the table and we'll tell you what we're going to do to change this dynamic. I don't believe they can tell me anything. I'd be, I'd be, be the first man to put my hands up, Gonzo, first man to put my hands up. But I don't believe they can tell me anything that's going to convince me that they should remain, you know? Well, I, I think you've heard their. I think you've heard their vision today. I, I, I really do. I think it might have been a bit cryptic. I think he might have um, stumbled and stuttered over it a little bit. And I don't think we've ever had the clarification that I alluded to at the start of the video, which was look, the last we heard from you, we were going to be challenging at the top. Yeah. Why, why haven't you amended that and just said to us, "There's a new reality." I'm afraid we've never had that. But I think today we've talk of going bankrupt. We've talk of the he hinted that the manager's trans main transfer target was too old, was overpriced. Um, with him certainly suggesting that um, any, he almost by blaming the fans for Pellegrini, he almost he was almost suggesting. I thought was quite transparent. I tried ambition, that didn't work. So again, that's on us. He's putting it, but as you said in your video, which I've put this up, you're saying that's on you. That's very very clear. There's also something else. Very fine detail, very fine detail, but I, I like I like the, the small bits because I think they're quite revealing. Mm -hmm. Jim White asked, do you have any regrets about the Dean Garner transfer? And he said no. For those of you that haven't heard it, that's what then led to him saying he had uh, 20,000 wingers at the club, right? 
I found the no completely revealing. And do you know what? Do you know what, Conza? And it's not sometimes. Ha- it's not saying no. It's the way he said no. It was almost a "How dare you?" in response to well, that. Well, it, it was just. He How was, dare you? He was absolutely brazen. Um, brazen is Brazen is brazen. Brazen is No. We've got nine other wingers at the club. Twenty. Yeah, the, the, the answer should have been. The answer should have been, you know what? In hindsight, I completely underestimated the depth of feeling to Grady Dean Garner. Um, he may well turn out to be a really yeah. good player. Quite Sorry. frankly, quite frankly, I've not had my finger on the pulse. I should have known. We call ourselves the Academy of Football. The phrase is festoons all over the carpet and all over there. I've sold a youngster. I've, I've, I've seen how the fans have reacted. I can only say to that. That I'm sorry, I got this vastly wrong. I know I've promised you much in the past, but going future, I am gonna, I am gonna tear to those things. I promise you, we're not gonna sell Declan. We're gonna look after these young boys coming right. through. We're, is, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna support the manager. That, that's the point. That's the point. When you when you drill down into that and you look at that statement, right? And this makes the blood boil. When you look at that statement, but like, you know, so Dean Garner, basically, any regrets? Are you feeling any regrets here? No. Where where was the? Do you know what, Jim? Grady was a great kid. He came through this club. He was an excellent model apprentice and will be a great professional. I was really sorry to see him go. Let's have a bit of respect for the yeah, lad. Right? Yeah, yeah. Good player for us. Played well. Wanted to play. He was gutted that he had to leave. And everyone that knows him, was he was gutted. He wanted to come back. He wanted to be a star in the Premiership in the Claret and Blue. Right? One of our own. Right? There was none of that. You know? Thrown up. Discarded. Discarded. You know, discarded. No emotion, no feeling, no care, no anything. Discarded, gone. And it, and if you if you can't if you kind of if you kind of look at that, right? So if I'm if I'm playing in the youth team for West Ham in the academy, right? If I'm another young player that we're looking to try and sign or looking to bring in, what does that tell me? What does that make me feel? Oh. What do I think now about West Ham? Because the West Ham, the family club, well, well, well are we? You know, what's going to happen? How are you going to feel? Well, your chairman, your chairman doesn't care, does he? You can just go straight down the road, mate. Off you go. Made a pound note, throwing it into the bank. And what are we doing with the money? You know, what are we doing with the money? We needed to sell Grady Dean Garner. Well, why? And this is the other point. Why do we need to sell him? Well, because, you know, because we can't get we can't get anybody uh, we can't get anybody into the ground. Well, we achieved, apparently, we achieved 88% of our season ticket number. And we're not having to contribute any costs to the ground. Well, I don't know the actual oh, detail I, I, numbers, but the ground's not open, is it? So we're not having to pay anybody any day. Okay, imagine if we did still own our ground. How skimp would we be then? <coughs> well, we would be, wouldn't we? Well, I mean, just, just, on, just on Dean Garner, I'll, I'll tell you not that it's particular. Well, it is relevant. Uh, this is this is from a mate, right, who I played pibble with, but he's a Tottenham fan. He's talking about... He, he texts me. He's, he's talking about Gareth Bale. He, he, hopes, he said, if hope Gareth Bale is... I'm not sure we're getting the same player, right? So he's telling me about that. And then he turns around and he says, oh, by the way, I never heard of that guy that you sold, but I was really impressed with his first half show last weekend for West Bromwich Albion. Um, he, what a cracking little player he is. Why the hell is Moyes selling him? It makes no sense. And this is, this is for a Tottenham fan looking from the outside. He only watched the West Brom game. He's seen Dean Garner play. Why on earth did you sell him? Obviously, I've put him right and said, hold oh, on, there's a bit more to it than that. But um, everyone can see, everyone can see that that was a bad deal. And regardless of whether you thought, look, if we're so skinned that actually 18 million is going to make a difference, then we have been mismanaged so much, well, I say worse than we thought, We maybe as we suspected. And also, our owners are far more skin than we ever imagined. Yes, and I, and I think I think that's the point. That that to me is becoming more and more evident by the day. Let's not forget, we we, we had a we had a whip round, and we raised thirty million, not so long back. Now we've sold it. Now, now we've sold a prodigy for eighteen million. That's forty eight million in the bank. We've got we, we've got clubs in Europe taking this, reporting this to FIFA for not paying our outstanding oh. bills. You know. Uh, and we're like, well, you know, we can't buy him. Who knows? Maybe he's trying to buy anyone. Maybe nobody wants to sell anybody to us. 
I, I said this earlier in the cup of tea. Yeah, why, 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 why would you? We've we got a reputation for not paying our bills. Well, exactly. Well, if you don't pay your bills, do you do business with people who don't pay their bills? I, I, don't, I don't do you business know. with people who don't pay their bills. Of course well, we, not. We, we all look at the rating on eBay when we're looking. When we're, when, when, you know, well, so if you're selling this out on eBay and someone's I, got a I, bad you know, I, I, remember, I remember before, man, one of my favourite lines of yours, TripAdvisor, right? TripAdvisor. Let's have a look at it. Let's TripAdvisor that. The, the West Ham experience. Where is it at the moment? Honestly, uh, and, and, it, and, it, and it burns, mate. It burns, it makes me angry, it makes me upset because I know that there are people at the club, right, that want better for West Ham fans. And the challenge at the minute is, are we ever going to be able to get better from this board? In the no. current state, nobody wants that. We're, we're trying to work towards fan engagement. We're trying to work towards it. We have been for 18 months. We've asked for a vision. We've asked for where people are taking us. And today, today should have been, you know, today should have been the opportunity to offer that olive branch. Today should have been the chance to come up and go, like we said before, Ed, come up and go, do you know what? This is where we are. I'm going, it's, it's, it's what you call that. You go naked, right? You go naked and you go, it should come to Jesus moment. You go naked and you're like, guys, here I am. I've made, I've, 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 I've made, I've dropped one here. You know, I've dropped one here. We're in a bit of trouble. Well, what I've was gambled. quite, what was quite telling, um, I mentioned this earlier, was normally when they have people on on that show, that that ten o'clock to one o'clock show, it's Jim White and Sh- Simon Jordan on, who, um, who I think is in- incredibly articulate, very intelligent, very sharp, very quick. Simon Jordan. Normally, Jim White introduces. Then, when somebody needs to be grilled, he passes them on to Simon Jordan. And Simon Jordan, by and large, tends to, well, he thinks more quickly and, and um, than whoever he's interviewing. They didn't let Simon Jordan anywhere near David Sullivan. He wasn't allowed to ask a single question. And I thought, well, that's that's quite telling. And I just, as I, as I said to you when I texted you earlier, when he finished up and he said, it was just the, the most leading question ever. It was something along the lines of, and what would you say to West Ham fans to convince them what a great owner you are? Words to that effect. I thought, oh, what? What? Um, look, I've discussed Jim White and Talk Sport more more than more than I need to. It's not about it's not about that. I, I, you know, I think he's a I don't think he's a very good journalist, particularly. No, as I said to I said to Joe earlier, he thinks he's Jeremy Paxman, he's Philip Schofield, um, and. Uh, and and that's that's what you're getting with him. So he I'd pay, do... pay good money to see Jim White doing yoga with a goat. I've got to tell you that. <laughs> you, you would, you would, you would indeed. Um, Genuinely, mate, I, I I I'm I, I'm I'm just at that point at the moment where I, I do not understand how you can come out with a statement like that. And that was, as you've alluded to, a pretty well rehearsed statement, right? That's a statement that he wouldn't have just gone on and said, right, if he's going on, that's an interview that he's looked at, he's looked at the detail. I, I'd like to think, I know I, we know he can be a bit maverick, right, and we know he can be a little bit lastminute.com with his responses. But to go on and say, pretty much, the manager's told me that these are the players he wants, i will try to give him these players, he don't want them. If I had a coach in, I'd be able to put my players in, things would be different. If I did that, I think he was saying, you fans, because I think that's kind of how he feels, like, you fans would probably be happy because what you got me to do beforehand, well, that's caused us all these problems. So it's all your fault. You know, honestly, mate, it's just it's just like the, it's like Johnny No Mates in the corner of a playground, isn't it? Blaming everybody else, pointing his fingers. All you lot, all you lot. No, Johnny, it's not us. It's you. When you're looking around and it's all going wrong, it's all going wrong around you, yeah? It's normally not everyone else, is it? There's a, the lowest common denominator, you know? All roads. Oh, oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Top, that's where you sit, mate. It's yours to own. You're accountable. Mistake after mistake after mistake, and he's never culpable. I, I've no doubt that, that what he wanted to say was planned and was executed. The points that Sullivan wanted to get across, he got across. So he, he ticked all the boxes. The sign-ins, the money, Pellegrini, so on and so forth. So forth. What I don't, what I don't understand is why him or anyone close to him 
ever thought it was a good idea to try and get those points across. I understand the concept of getting points across, but why didn't someone say, no, we need a bit of humility. We need to connect with the fans. Don't go in there all guns blazing with your chest sticking out. And I think that I do, I do believe it was the final, the final, not the final nail in the coffin, but realistically any hope that there might have ever been that he was slightly repentant that they were slightly edging towards the realisation that they'd not done well. Acceptance that things weren't going right. There's no unity, mate, is there? No, there's, there's no. no. It, it blew it all out. It blew it all out the water. It was it was a case of we've done fine. Um, this, this and this have done wrong and circumstances have been against us with the COVID. I think, no, no, no. I, I'm 100% sure they firmly believe that they're good at what they do. And they've just been unlucky. And while they hold that how mindset, we're measure, all screwed. How do they measure if that's the perception and this is their perception of success? What metrics are they using to measure that success? Because the only benchmark that I've got, the only benchmark that my members continually, you know, can continually go back, you know, and they harass Bubbles, they harass Andy, harass everyone else, and they're quite right to. We love it that they're like that, right? You know, they're our fans. It's us, you know. They're like, we're, we're, we're them, they're us. They keep coming back to me. They've not delivered. They've not delivered. What have they not delivered against? They've not delivered against that pledge. Yes. We've left our spiritual home for that. That was the trade-off. That's the They've only put, thing that's important. There's no other set of metrics that you could possibly measure this. And if I have to, if, if I, if I have to hear one more time that we had this amazing transition over to the London Stadium, well, it's not amazing, is it? Because... To try and blame COVID for the current situation, and I'll be talking about this maybe a bit, maybe a bit during the, over the weekend or something tomorrow. I, I've not forgotten the season ticket renewals, right? Which kind of has, has kind of come and passed. Eighty-eight percent season ticket renewal, right? You do the math on that. That's six thousand West Ham fans. Six thousand West Ham fans have said, "I'm not going back to West Ham." And for any of us to think that the reason that they give up their season ticket is because of COVID, frankly, is ridiculous. Well, particularly when you can more or less renew for free because you had you had credit in the in the old club cash anyway, which credit, is what which is what I've done. And and, and that's that's yeah. that's six thousand with a load of others hedging their bets, watching what's happened. Right. I'd so imagine the real figure is. And this has context for what that actually means. Six thousand West Ham fans. So it's only twelve percent. The way it was positioned was to talk the numbers down, right? Let's take us back to our beautiful bowling, right? And let's say that we've got Man United at home, or we've got Tottenham under the lights, right? And me and you, guys, we've, for, for, however we've done it, I don't know how we've done it, but we've managed to get out in the centre circle just before kickoff, okay. right? And we're looking at we're looking at the Bobby Moore stand, think, no, that's great, the old South Bank. We turn around, we look at the east side, and we stand up. And we looked at what was finally the Sir Trevor Brooking stand, eventually the centenary, but the old North Bank after yeah, they knocked down. Bank, yeah. Capacity of that was 6,000 people, mate. Imagine taking everybody out of that stand. Imagine taking every West Ham fan out of that stand. That's how many people have given up on Gold, Sullivan and Brady as the regime. How many more West Ham fans are going to give up their season ticket and walk away under this regime. When are we going to be able to stop this bleed? When is somebody going to have the balls to rise above the parapet at the club and say, this is the vision. This is what we're going to do. This is where we're going to go. This is the past. These are the mistakes. This is what we've done. Open arms. We've nosed it up. But this is what we're going to do over the next five years. This is the new plan. Um, or they, on, they tin, honestly, it's going to be tin hats on and, you know, not wanting to drive past a couple of fellas with a flag and going in through the wrong entrance at the Olympic Stadium on a Tuesday night for a cup game or a Saturday game or whatever when there's no one else about. Is that really what it's going to be like? Is it going to be another risk? Is, am, I, am I going to get another series of phone calls when this goes out tomorrow from the club saying, well, you can't talk like that. You can't say that. We won't meet you. We won't talk to you if you if you kind of have that kind of position. But we're a bit past that now, aren't we? This is like, it's time for the grown-ups now. It's time to stop being kids. It's time to be grown-ups around the table and for someone to come out and say, look, 
We're going to do better. This is how we're going to do better. This is the problem we've got. This is why we can't do better. You know, try and appeal to our better side. Tell us why you can't do it. Tell us why you can't find the money. But if you can't find the money, like I've said before, Ed, put the club up for sale. There are people out there interested. We know there are people out there interested in buying this football club, right? But just like Sullivan said earlier, you know, well, I'm not going to pay over the odds. I'm not going to pay inflated prices. Well, investors and people that want to buy this football club, they're not going to pay inflated prices either. And once upon a time, you came along and said, we are but custodians of this club. You're the owners. And if you don't want us here, we will go. Well, everywhere I look at the moment, I look across my membership. I look across all of the social media platforms, the hammers that I speak to when, believe it or not, I go to the hairdressers to have my beard trimmed. Yeah, I go yeah, yeah. The hammers I bump into, the ones at football training when I coach my boys, there's no, there's, 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 there's no corners, mate. There's no love. There's no love out there at the minute for them. They're not wanted. People want them to leave. And the reason they want them to leave isn't just because of all the damage they've done. It's because they don't see it getting any better. There's no alternative. There's no path. There is no vision. Where's the vision? Give us a vision. Okay. Well, I think... um. I don't think they will. Look, I mean, we'll finish it up there. I don't think they will go. They actually remind me, you mentioned the Titanic earlier. I think they're, they're a bit like the band on the Titanic, still uh, dancing to the tune that they're playing, completely oblivious to the fact that the ship is sinking and still making out everything's everything's A-OK. I can't, I can't, I can't believe that. And I'll tell you why I can't believe that, right? I, I do believe, and I've said this before, I do believe, I, I've never bought into that David Sullivan's a great West Ham fan, right? As a, when I used to go to school, I used to bump down up the lane. I walked past seeing him standing outside. I didn't think he was a West Ham fan then. Don't think he's a West Ham fan now, you know? You would never find a West Ham fan standing there wearing a Birmingham shirt, showing off what you've done if you've bought the club or not, you know? Curbs was a West Ham fan. Yeah, Managed yeah. Charlton, trained in his West Ham tracksuit, right? That's what West Ham did. Yeah. David Gold is a West Ham fan. David Gold has died in the war, West Ham fan. Yes. He might not have made the best decisions. He might not have been the best owner. But I do believe that that man had the best intentions when initially he looked to buy this club. You know, and I thought it'd be very different. We've talked beforehand about buying the stadium, renting the stadium, and the tangent that that took us on. Yes. You know, and the journey that they took us on. I don't think this was ever David's vision. I really don't. And as for, as for Karen Brady... You know, Karen Brady has built this great brand as a smart, intelligent businesswoman, right? This great brand. I can't believe that anybody that spent as much time investing in themselves and building that brand out would want to be associated with the absolute failure that this club is turning into and becoming. I cannot believe mm. that she's not ready or willing to turn around and come out with some kind of statement or when she was involved beforehand with Philip Green and she saw the wheels were going sure, off and the decisions sure. were being made there, she left, right? She was like, look, I can't work in this environment. You know, I'm not prepared to work in this environment. This is wrong. I'm leaving. I can't believe that she's going to do nothing. I don't see the burying the head in the sand ostrich piece as being a viable option anymore. I just don't. I look at it at the minute and I question what that dynamic must be like. You know, how it's because if there's no money to change anything, you know the fans are not happy. It must be an absolute godsend that there's no supporters at football at the minute venting their frustrations. You know, they're an absolute godsend. But it's not going away. It's all over social media. You've got art statements like today, like who on who, who, who on the planet said, yeah, Dave, that's a good idea. You know? But, but when you're omnipotent, omnipotent, when you are the, the dictator of football, which he is... You're not seeking counsel from anyone. There's no one there to say, don't do it. Maybe his sons have a word in his ear and, and say, you know, maybe don't do that or something like that. But realistically, who's going to tell him anything? Nobody. So he just goes and does it because that's the way he's lived his life. David Sullivan is the boss. And unfortunately, when you don't take advice off anybody, when you think you know best on everything... And you've been doing it for the amount of years he has. You become stubborn. You become interested. Look, we all come a little, become a little bit more stubborn, a little, more, a little bit more set in our ways as we get older. That's natural. But imagine being like that. Imagine that that whole process if you've never taken advice of everybody. If you've always been the boss, and 
even when you make bad decisions, people don't really question you. And and the thing is, you say about olive branches earlier, we offered out olive branches and, and it's constantly happened. Yeah. He's had numerous opportunities to make things better. I don't think he snaps olive branches off. I don't think he even recognises them as olive branches. I don't think he's got a clue what's going on, actually. And I just think there's enough signals in there. I think he's aware that he is unpopular. So I think if you do ask him, he'd say, oh, yeah, of course, there's protests. And I think he would he would make reference to it. But I really don't think he understands the depth of feeling. And it doesn't matter how many signs he drives past or how many times people tell him or how many articles he's shown. He is still absolutely steadfast, absolutely resolute that he is doing the right thing. It, honestly, I, I, I think there's no way of swaying his opinion at all. He, he I, I am adamant he will not be convinced that he, it's basically his, his way or the highway. And if he will know it's not completely successful at the moment, but he'll have an excuse for every single reason that it isn't successful. There are many people like that. It's just a lot of them don't tend to end up in massive positions of power well, like you know, he is a lot of those people tend to be say, saviors actually you say, you, you say that uh, and I, I i actually i actually buy into a lot of that and you know i think there are plenty of examples plenty of examples not just with people but if you look at business and big business big businesses that thought they had everything whipped they didn't evolve they didn't listen to the people around them and they went bang and that's what terrifies me off the back of that statement today, because when words like we will go bankrupt start creeping into conversation, you know, I wonder how bad it really is and how bad has it got to get before he gets it? How bad has it got to get before he gets it? Because if he doesn't get it and he thinks that this is still a redeemable situation and he can keep on doing what he's done for the past 10 years and everything's going to be all right. He's only got to look at those renewals, mate. Let's take, let's go back. Let's go back to that picture. Yeah. We've lost the North bank. No, I, I think it's a powerful, um, it's a powerful we've suggestion, got, powerful, and, powerful image. And, and we've lost a few of the old chicken run as well. Mm. What's going to happen next? We're going to lose the East side. We're going to lose another 10, 12,000. Then what? Back to, Back to where I grew up. It'll, just, it'll be excuses. It will be COVID. It will be this. There, there will always be an excuse of him. And to answer your question about how bad he's got to get, don't be surprised if at the point he realises it'll be a case of, well, if I'm going down, you're all coming with me. And that, and that, that's been suggested by a few people, by a few people. And that's where, openly, I'd appeal maybe to David Gold, his partner. And I'd say to David Gold, you are West Ham. I know you're West Ham. I know. I've been, I've, I've, I've been told by people who have been around your house that you've got Vaz Tay celebrating that goal sprawled across your room. I've, I've, I've been told you've got a replica of the FA Cup with claret and blue ribbons on it. You know, I know you're West Ham. Are you gonna, is your legacy going to be letting David Sullivan run this club into the crown and go bankrupt? Is that going to be your legacy? And I'd say to Karen Brady, is that the legacy that you want to be associated with? Legacy was a word that Karen kicked around quite a lot, you recall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's so yeah. Rich, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, the is this the legacy we're going to get at the minute? You know, is the legacy really, we're hoping to get lucky. We're hoping that we could take the form that we finished the season with into this season. And that's going to be enough to get us through, even though we know that there's holes all over the squad and it's disbalanced. Is, 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 that, is that where it is? There's got to be more. There's got to be more. He, he cannot isolate himself to that extent and not listen to the senior state, to, to the board members that are around him. Trevor Brookings on that. Tre, tre, Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Brookings tied in around that regime. You know, Terry Brown. I know that Terry Brown, I understand that Terry Brown's got the gates. From the boat. Is Terry Brown going to see this club go spiralling down on a legacy? He's done enough damage over the years. Surely he's not going to let that happen again. They can't. I don't, they can't. I, I, I don't, I don't believe. We've seen it at the mid tier. We've seen a lot of. We've seen a lot of turnover at West Ham. We've seen a lot of people who've hit that glass ceiling and they've wanted to try and change something. They wanted to deliver something and they've not been able to. You know, 
to that to those that are around David Sullivan, to David Sullivan himself, you've got to do more or you've got to put us up for sale, pal. You're in the position now where where this for you is a tipping point. The statement you've made today is a tipping point. Give us a vision, work with your board and come back to us by the weekend with a vision because you've had 10 years, mate. Come back to us by the weekend with a vision. Tell us how it's going to change. And if you can't, do the right thing. Look at yourself in the mirror and go, do you know what? I've come a long way. Right? I've come a long way. I've come a long way from the valleys to go to the UEL, to get me degree, to do me a bit of banking and finance, to, to, to wheel and deal in the businesses I've wheeled and dealing. I've built out an amazing commercial property portfolio. I'm a successful businessman. No one can take that away from you. Right? And you've been in the football game for a good period of time. You know, Birmingham wasn't that great. You've come here. It's really not been that great. You may have had the highest of ambitions and the very best of intentions, but you've not delivered, mate. You've not delivered. It's time for you, as a custodian, to give the ownership of the club back to the fans and put new custodians in place who can deliver the original dream that you promised us. Mate, that's a that's a good closing statement. I'll tell you what, I'd like to think this is the end of it. And and they will listen to that plea there. But I I really feel that you're going to be a really busy boy for the next two weeks. I, I think we're just getting warmed up. I think this is the start of the day. I, I think with the uh, the additional that you're you're a, you're a fans group. You've got fifteen thousand members. The uncertainty of getting back to football. Um, we'll certainly have to speak again about that if you don't mind. I think we're gonna um you the whole transfer window is gonna blow up and make things a lot more. You basically you're you're gonna find your your spare time as eaten um is eaten. Well, it's a, uh, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your I'm lovely I'm lady said to me I'm earlier. Just, I'm she I'm said I'm to me, I'm you, you can have him for the I'm evening. I hope you can hear. One thing that I, one thing that I will say in closing, mate. One thing that I will say in closing is to watch the space because at Hammers United, I have the privilege of working with some really, really great people. You know, some really good guys and girls who give up a lot of their time. They're all they're all claret and blue to the bone. They give up their free time and their spare time to to enable our membership and over 15,000 fans to have a voice. I'm also blessed with some incredibly learned legal people and advice from an amazing think tank. And when we talk protest, protesting in the current climate is incredibly difficult, but it isn't impossible. And I really wouldn't want to be in the position where I've got to look to make a decision to weigh up social responsibilities in a COVID climate and look to take people out in a mass demonstration again. But I'm pretty confident, based on the advice that I've been received, that if I had to do it, I could do it. And and you would have the support and massive support. Um, Tross, thanks again, mate. You know, I mean... I'm sorry we have to keep doing it. Last time we said that, I said we'd do a little football video, didn't I? And we'd discuss the players. And um, I we'd think we might... at some point, mate. We'd love we to. Will, but I think we might some... be it might be a little while, mate. As I say, I, I mean it. I think we've got a really interesting couple of weeks for the two reasons I mentioned. But um, yeah, listen, I'm going to put your video at the start. Um, uh, the website where can people find you? Your, what's going to happen next couple of days? I was going to say www.hammersunited.com. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us under on Twitter under Hammers United hashtag Hammers United Two. Get me getting down with the kids. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, and that's us. And if if you if you're not a member already and you want you want to see change at the football club, join up. We're trying to we're trying to achieve that change. You know, we're committed to try and improve things for all West Ham fans. We're committed to try and achieve constructive and meaning meaningful dialogue. With the club, that is getting harder by the day with statements like this. There we go. Um, look, folks, all I would say is that the link is in the description below. I'm not telling you what to do. Clearly, you know, you watch enough of these videos if you tune in every day to know um, what I'm aligned to. I don't want to be doing this, uh, quite frankly. Today's video was meant to be um, about Elise and was going to be about Ben Johnson today because I did Harrison Ashby yesterday. With the best of intentions, I'm trying to come out here and do um, do football stuff, but this is just another clanger from the club. Um, it had to be, number one, it had to be discussed. 
and that's why myself and Gio spent a whole cup of tea discussing it. We weren't even going to be discussing this either, by the way. Um, but it's also why I had to get had to get Tross on, particularly bearing in mind his statement, which you would have seen at the start. And there's going to be so many people at Hammers United, the members of the 15,000 members that have got questions. Hopefully we've answered a few of them um, this evening. Maybe there have been more questions than answers. But again, that's probably no bad thing because these people uh, need to be held to account. And um, whether there's change or whether there's not change, certainly we need to open a dialogue with the club and we need to we need to move forward because these are very, very dodgy times for any football club. And I certainly do feel that with the latest announcement pushing the fans' attendance back even further and further and further, there are going to be a lot of clubs lower down the pyramid going to the wall. Now is a precarious time of football. It's a precarious time of business. There's people losing their jobs and everything else. And the club really need to provide a clear and coherent strategy and a support for their fans, not making themselves ever more distant and making excuses and having a blame culture around it, which is what we've got now. Trust my old son. Thank you very much, sir. Always a pleasure, Gonzo. Love being on there. You know, I, I, I wish we could get on here and we could do something positive and upbeat. I'd love cool. to be in the position for us to be able to talk about something, you know, something great, something fun. Unfortunately, it's the, uh, it's almost like the poisonous gift that keeps on giving at the minute, mate, isn't it? You know, it's killing us. It, it, it really is, mate. I'll get you. I'll tell you what, when we beat Liverpool, um, and, uh, and the winger Robert oh, Snodgrass. You never, you never know. Ball, and it's, so, something, something else I'll say at the back end, you know, we are 110% behind the team, behind the boys. Even when we've been, done the small scale protests down at the ground, when the team have turned up, we've clapped in the coach, you would have seen Bubbles and some of the boys doing that at Arsenal. I was down doing it at a couple of the games, the cup game against Charlton, when we had the first game against Newcastle. We're 100% behind the team. We think the team needs strengthening. That's why we're here. You know, Jesus, I, I just want them to wake up in the morning and think, Do you know what, I'm going to change it. You know, I'm going to change it. Uh, but mate, if there's, there's no doubt that, that all of us <laughs> watching this love the club more than he does. And, and that's why it's all so painful. Um, listen, mate. I'll speak to you very, very soon. Um, Click the link below, everybody. Uh, Tross, Hammers United. Cheers, mate.